it shouldn't be like I should get rid of my ego and if I've got if I haven't got rid of it I failed or you know my ego is being really problematic it's probably responding because unconsciously there's something it's attending to it could be something as deep as pre-verbal trauma like birth trauma like this is something which really isn't appreciated enough that as creatures we're we're born as these again we we have to try to functionally we're all about survival as evolved creatures and in the moment you're born that's the that's the most high risk moment of, of your existence and there's no magic threshold where the baby that's in the womb the baby that's out of the room nothing changes in the brain to make it you know suddenly like that split second uh it's you know say alive or aware and the, the split second before it wasn't so we know that the birth the birthing process should have a it should feel like a traumatic event to the to the child um and just because we don't you know you you learn language later and that's how you store memories after you've acquired language so that's why we don't have memories from from this period but all of that abstraction all of that linguistic memory is built on the emotional core of our functioning as kind of as as living creatures and so that will be that for all of us there's some latent uh, kind of fear memory in the body that you wouldn't be able to put into words if you uncovered it, but it's this, it's there. And people do uncover it, uh, seemingly. Um, it's hard to, you know, prove this for a fact. Um, but if you look at the case reports, it's, it seems fairly undeniable that, that experientially people can relive these kinds of um, birth trauma effects. So uh, even someone who feels like they're the model of health and their ego keeps kind of, they can't seem to get it to, they think it's not serving them, say. It's like, say they have ruminative and anxious thoughts. And that's, you know, can be thought of as an ego that's kind of overactive. It won't just be overactive for, for the sake of being overactive. It's probably being fueled by some unresolved fear. You know, the brain circuits that were calibrating how content and safe you felt in the world, those always happen when, you know, that's, that's those are being built up through that period and you're being born and you're being raised and if you're born and you're immediately soothed you can you don't have to you know you can undo the the potential for trauma you got you undergo this high risk event perhaps it goes fairly smoothly it was scary but you're soothed you, you're being fed and then you can learn you build up a model of okay actually that wasn't too traumatic so for that person it, you know their birth trauma probably isn't going to impact them that much but for someone else you know we know there's a whole range of things can happen, you know, umbilical cord around the neck, or even once they're born, just slightly emotionally neglectful parents can be enough for that creature that's not yet the ego, it's not yet this abstraction to live in a state of just physical clenching and anxiety. And so that's still in the body and it could be leading to other health issues of like asthma, we know is related to, to this kind of anxiety and, and um, eczema and all these kind of stress related issues but also just anxiety just just the ruminative ego could be there because it knows something's not right it never it never felt at home in the world it never did it never managed to resolve and get to this situation where it's like now we're fully safe and this can be you know the circuits in the brain that that enable that that give you the sense of am i you know am i am i home and am i safe I built up in childhood and then as an adult you might actually be safe you might have a lot of material wealth and you've got a loving family and all this stuff but that part of you those circuits are still there and they're still it's not been resolved and so you know this is where the concept of the inner child is actually really powerful uh, if it's something that you know you feel an instinct to kind of sneer at or roll your eyes at um, it's, it really is something that's worth, um, thinking about and looking into. And the reason we sneer and roll our eyes is because the trauma is being stirred effectively, but psychedelics are a way to, it seems, and it's kind of, you know, very exciting new research in this area. It seems that they reopen the plasticity, the learning of those models that tell you if you're safe and you know, at home and all these kinds of models. And that gives you an opportunity 
you know, if you're in a therapeutic context, if you've had PTSD and as an adult, perhaps you've had a kind of snapshot memory that just gets stuck in your, in your brain. And again, your ego is constantly replaying this memory, or maybe even it's not even the ego, it's just the system. The brain is just throwing this up because it, it feels that was so intense. I need to make sure, so obviously not saying it in these, in these words, but the system is making sure you're safe. Um, and so it's trying to learn, it's trying to make sure this never happens again. But say this was at war and now you're at home and your rational mind knows it's never going to happen again, but the system keeps throwing it up. Um, well, then if you're in a situation where there are some, you know, therapists around who are signaling to you that they look, they, they want you to feel kind of looked after. Um, and then you take something like psilocybin or MDMA or ayahuasca and you reopen the capacity for those models to learn, am I safe? Well, then you can look around and go, oh, I am safe. It's really that simple. I'm safe. And because it gets physiologically into those circuits in the brain, those circuits can then, they can't store both memories. They can't store, I am profoundly unsafe and I'm not, I'm profoundly unsafe and I am safe. So the old memory gets re rewritten with a new memory of I'm safe. And this is why, you know, three sessions of MDMA therapy cures PTSD for a lot of people. And, you know, this is why it's so important and that we keep talking about this stuff and we move this stuff, you know, forward as, as quickly as possible. Because if you look at the statistics of, you know, how many people commit suicide from PTSD, it's, it's a really urgent problem. And every day that we don't get something like mushrooms, you know, widely available for people, even though that's not the main one being studied for PTSD, but I'm certain it would, it would have, um, it would be helpful for people. Um, every day we don't do this, people are dying. So, you know, I think in our lifetime, we're going to see a really positive change in this area. Um, but.